Okay, so, so my name is Jerry Early. I'm from Arnmore Island, Donegal. Um, I would represent the fishermen on the island um, and I actually chairperson of, of a group called Emerald, um, along with some of the other hats I wear. But Emerald basically is an Irish island based, Irish island marine resource organisation that was, I suppose, funded or founded on the back of the cutbacks and the I suppose the um, levies and, and other stuff that's put on us in the fishing uh, industry. So we've um, we've a group that's been founded now for what had been born out of Donegal fishermen and originally in two thousand and seven two thousand and eight, um, mainly because of the of the the ban on salmon fishing, uh, which we felt was was wrong in every sense of the word. <coughs> we felt that it was a concerted effort by by stakeholders out you know within the state that had their own interests and certainly not the interests of fishermen and, and we felt that as islanders it, it really impinged on on our rights um, not just as fishermen but also as, as islanders uh, and taking away something that was inherently so important to us um, both as fisher, fisher peoples and also as islanders. So um, that's where Demro started. It was Donegal uh, Irish Marine Resource Organization. Um, we would have then had um, different um, different political moves, I suppose, to to get us back into the, the specter of of getting talking to policymakers namely civil servants, ministers, etc, etc. Um, we got invited to, to the Arachthus to make our Arachthus committee in, in Val Aaron to make representations on behalf of the Donegal fishermen. And I remember it was a very daunting actually experience because you're going into this, this iconic building in Dublin um, and we were just you know four or five very <coughs> I suppose small fishermen uneducated to an extent well, certainly not with the education that were the people of our peers that were in the building, but it was very, you know, I, I do remember that, that that it was daunting and, and the extreme because um, we just felt that we were fighting uh, not just the faceless people that were on the committee, but also the, the establishment uh, and, and the state. And it was um, daunting to say, to say the least. But I, I remember uh, in the first, in the first time that we went there that, that very quickly um, while in that committee room in Dublin and Dal Aaron, I realised that, that what I was talking about I knew so much more you know I knew the history whereas the people that were listening didn't and I thought you know what I have nothing to be afraid of here because all I have to do is tell the truth and and and, and that we did. Um, now we have been met with, with much opposition. Um, we're 10 years, 11 years further down the road and we're still fighting. Um, and we will fight um, because it's, it's who we are, it's, it's what we are. We're, we're the last of the hunters, I believe. And you cannot just take something off uh, a group. Uh, and and I'm, I'm making this very specific to Islanders because, you know, we're surrounded by water. Um, and it makes a difference, believe me. Uh, I do have sympathy with coastal communities, but, but our case is much stronger because it's part of who we are. W you know, we came to the islands, I believe, not to harvest the land, but to harvest the seas. And when you take that away from us, um, well, then you have to put up the consequences of the fight that's going to come with it. And we're still fighting. And I do believe that, that so much positive stuff, uh, our group, I'll come back to how Demro was, or Emro was formed. On one of the meetings, I would have said the second meeting we had with the Arachthus, um, it was made very plain to us that as Donegal people, we could not be fighting this fight on our own, that we had no grounds to do this. And the only way that we would actually have any sort of leverage or any credence within the system was to widen it out to all the islands of Ireland which I think was, was, was a concerted effort and a very, you know, deliberate campaign by, by the committee of the day to sort of maybe try and discourage us from doing that because Ireland, Ireland um, geographically is made up of so many different islands. So they probably would have thought that it was impossible for us to garner support from the rest of the islands because it was very specific. Uh, 
but um, they underestimated how, how I suppose determined we were because we actually did got full support from all the islands so within that Emerald group which is the Irish Islands Marine Resources Organization and we've got islanders now uh, that sit on the committee from all the islands uh, so we've grown um, very strong um, so much so that that on the back of, of our work there was a report done in 2014 which had 29 recommendations from the Oireachtas Committee on how to I suppose it was it was the widening it's a little bit to include coastal communities, but basically um, it was an island-driven document. And from that, um, we took three of the recommendations. Now there was twenty-nine recommendations, and, and like all these these reports, uh, a lot of them are, are dust gatherers. Um, but again, through through bullheadedness and, and, and stubbornness. We push and we are pushing for three, one of them being heritage license, the other one is social and the other one then is to do with, with, with sales and, and, and marketing etc. But the one that we focused on really was the heritage license uh, because we believe the word heritage really encapsulates everything that, that is important, not just for, for the islands but for the country um, and again we have met huge opposition from from the sitting government of today, um, and <clears throat> I suppose mainly from from the civil servants because they're very much afraid of of you know some of our demands, which are very I think very moderate demands. We're looking for um, going back to I suppose going back, take a step forward. We're taking a step back, going back to very sustainable fishermen or fishing, um, very. Um, workable quotas um, and also just I suppose the word heritage itself um, encapsulates a lot what islands and coastal communities are about and, and it's sometimes that word is overused I think um, so we've met a lot of opposition on that um, but as it stands it's, it's, it's gone through it was a bill brought forward uh, and I'm not ashamed to say it it was brought forward by Sinn Féin um, into the into the into the committee rooms and it has support of, of I would have said, 80% of the committee but again the the department and the government are, are opposing it um, and I believe that it doesn't matter who be in government they're going to oppose it because it's they're afraid of, of what we may gain uh, causing a bigger um, I suppose tsunami up the line where, where we're dealing with quota and, and if you think that, that some of the bigger boats, um, and most of the bigger boats, have, have all the quota, they're just afraid to give it up. And, and that, to me, is, is, is wrong. Um, and we're fighting that on, on, on very you know, different fronts. We've aligned ourselves very closely with, with European partners. Um, we have the Irish Small Islands. We have, um, you know, we're very, very involved in, in the nuts and bolts of what's going on at Europe. We have huge support from Europe. Um, so much so that just recently um, there was a campaign uh, that we would have fronted, Midland Centre, um, to do with pulse fishing. Um, <clears throat> it was mainly Dutch boats and three different partnerships um, with Life, which is low impact fisheries of Europe. Uh, a lot of the bloom, I suppose, to be environmental bodies and, and us being fishermen, we actually got to stop to that uh, because it was a more fishing as far as I'm concerned. Um, so. We're doing a lot of good things, and and, and I, I do firmly believe that that you know they can only keep us back for so long because we're not going to give in until 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 we're not going to give in. Period. End of story. Um, there's a lot of good things happening there. We're also working on on uh, a PO, um, which actually we should have word on the next couple of weeks because with the application is in, we're uh, Emro. Um, what I suppose in the network um, we have applied to be a producers organization within the inshore sector representing only island boats. Now we have um, between 45 and 50 members which would leave us uh, numbers wise the biggest PO in Ireland um, which would give us uh, well it gives us for a start it gives us equal uh, voice 
it gives us a seat at the top table where we're in there with, with all the POs, all the, the departments, uh, all the agencies, BIM, etc., etc. So, again, I suppose that, and, and one of the things that, that I have to stress is this group that, that, that you know, of I'm only one of, we have, this has been done absolutely with no funding. We have driven this ourselves, and it's very unique in the sense that. You know, for all the, the groups that are set up and all the, 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 the organizations, most of them are, 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 are funded based. This has, we've gone all over the world, we've gone all over Europe, we've gone, you know, we're up and down the road to Dublin, Galway, having meetings, and this is done out of our own pockets. So that in itself is, I think, is very pure. It's very, um, I think it tells a huge story. And, and as I said, um, it will come to, to pass where we will be taken seriously and you know we may in the future be driving the agenda rather than, than sitting getting the crumbs off the table. So um, like I say I'm, I'm from Arnmore Island. Um, now my family going back, uh, great-grandfather, grandfather, my own father, um, fishermen, um, traditional fishermen I suppose would be the term we used and and I have I have used this analogy more than once, um, and, and some of the talks I would have done and used as an example. But but I was I was born into to well it was a business family as well. But but I would have taken the my father's I suppose um, fiber and and uh, used the the soul of the island. My father was a fisherman and he came from a long line of fishermen, and I would have followed that um, so much so that that. That um, you know, when I was when I could walk, I was in boats, running around in boats, and, and, and that in itself was as a massive education. What I doesn't know in it, um, we were getting the ways of the sea. Um, I suppose like like other coastal communities, the same. But you know, when you wake up and you're surrounded by sea, you know, for us to get anywhere, we have to go by boat, um, and that's just a fact of life, and that's a beautiful, pure, simple way of life, as far as I'm concerned. So. From a very young age, uh, you were immersed in, in seafaring, whether it be rowing, whether it be boat handling, whether it be fishing, and you were getting all these, you know, back in the day when you were just working off headlands and marks on the, on, on the island for different grounds and stuff, you know, that was priceless stuff. Um, so that was taken off us, uh, unquestionably, uh, and I do believe there was a concerted effort to do that. Um, and, and again, I suppose, now, you know, where I'm at now in my life is, is I'm still, I like to think myself as a fisherman, although um, I, I don't depend on fishing anymore. And that, again, is, is not by my choice. That's because of, of sanctions imposed upon us. But, but, you know, I look at my own son, who's now 20, and, and I, I look at where he has come from, as to you know, has 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 grown up on the island as opposed to mine, um, and he's very much an islander as much as I am, but it's very very different. Um, you know, whereas I was about boats from a young age, um, my son Paul would have seen, he would have been at the age when when the bands came in, initially the salmon ban in two thousand and six, and then the closed area six A, which effectively. Corral is into a two-stock fishery, uh, mainly lobster and crab, which you know is unsustainable at, at any level, and we've said that from day one. Um, and unfortunately, the, the policymakers could not see it the way we could see it. But if I go back to my son Paul, and, and his grown up, as opposed to my grown up, you know, he had a very happy childhood as well, but but a very different childhood. And I just think that that. From our generation, you know, we learn how to work the sea, which in turn, you know, you go back into, to, to, I suppose you're fighting this element, um, or a huge respect for the sea, which then, you know, I suppose a sequence of steps, you end up being one of the best lifeboat crews in the coast, uh, and I say that without contradiction, because you, you were a mayor, you had, you had seamen, from a very young age, who knew how to work the seas, the new, the, 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 I suppose, the anger of the seas, you knew how to handle the seas, and, and of course, life saving and, and all the little factors. 
But then you look at how to sail boats and how to work boats. Now, unfortunately, um, my son, who is uh, 20, he has never worked a boat. Um, he, he probably wouldn't, well, he, he wouldn't, you know, I'm going to call a spade a spade. He, he just wouldn't know how to work a boat um, in any sense. Now, that's not his fault. I have to say that. Uh, it's not my fault. It's not my father's fault. Or, or, or anybody in Ireland's fault. That is, I believe, the fault of, of a concerted campaign by, by policymakers in this country. And, and that part of it, I believe, is unforgivable. And, and, and if they just knew the extent of, of how to rip the heart and soul out of, out of a community by doing stuff like that, well, I think they would have to, you know, I think in future they would, they would have to have a conscience and say, you know, is this right, is this wrong? But in spite of that, and in spite of all the campaigns, I believe um, we've risen above that and, and we're fighting back in so many different ways. Um, so much so that, that in, with, with the group that we're working with and, and some really outstanding um, volunteers within the group that are, are, are looking at the bigger picture, is to say, OK, we, you, you'll take X and Y off us, but we're coming back with A, B and C. So we're going to be a step ahead all the time. We're now at the forefront um, through the help of, of the campaign that's been set up here in, in this fantastic building um, with three in the hub. Um, so there's a campaign now going on where we're working with, with um, where you can have an, an app called Al... I can never pronounce this. Abalobi. Abalobi. It's an app called Abalobi. So it's an app called Abbey Lobby that we're working with, where it has the, this is the way it will be, where we can go out in, in the morning, for example, just to give an example of, of where we're thinking this is going. And, and again, I, I believe that we're driving this. Um, we're a test case. Uh, Abbey Lobby is, is South African based app that allows you to go out, catch your fish, um, whether it be lobster, crab, Lane caught fish, um, wrasse, pollock, mackerel, whatever the catch of the day, where we can upload this onto an app um, when we finish our day's fishing. And then the consumer, whether it be islanders or mainlanders or, or whatever, can see from that app what the catch of the day has been. And then we can direct sales. Um, there will be a system where, you know, I get a phone call. This is what I've had. It's, it's you know, you're talking about traceability. You're talking about everything. This is Jerry's catch, for example. Today, he has X, Y, and Z of pollock, mackerel, lobster, crab, and the consumer, whether it be on the island or on the mainland, can actually call me up and say, "Okay, I'll take five kilo of lobster. I'll take five kilo." So this is where we're at. We're driving this from a different perspective, and in many ways, I think we're. we're and there is different market employees going on with, with different agencies on the, uh, on, in the country of Ireland. But I think we are at the forefront of that again. And, and it's, I suppose, we have to think outside the box because we've been hemmed into a box. Um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's fair to say that it's, that it's, that it's because we're islanders or, or community or rural. Maybe rural is probably a good term to use because Sometimes I believe that, that the word rural is, is frowned upon and it's looked upon as we're, we're very second class. I don't believe that to be the case. I believe that we're, we're so far ahead of the curveball, actually, that, that you know, we're the drivers and I think we will continue to be the drivers. And I think it's very important that, that it's recognized at, at whatever level and um, onwards and upwards for, for us and onwards and upwards for the island and I think there's, there's you know, we're never going to go away so just give in to us and let us drive you.